Good morning, everybody. This morning I'm on my back patio and it's a beautiful May morning. You might hear the birds in the background. You might also hear a construction worker across the street in my backyard doing some work on a neighbor's house. Just a regular day here in the neighborhood. I just wanted to mention a few things before I share a message the Lord put on my heart for this week. Um, a few things are, be sure to check out the announcements page today because there's a lot of announcements for this week. A lot has been going on and ideas are coming up that we want you to hear about, so be sure and check it out. Also, we want you to know that at this time there's not a service planned for Judy Heck. All our love is going out to her and her family. And we're grateful for the way God delivered her into glory this week. He is so good. However, if you'd like to send a card to the family, there is information for you to do so on the personal prayer request page. So you can look there for that information as well. So last week we started discussing um, repentance. And I wanted to just talk some more about that today with things the Lord put on my heart. And uh, it's sweet because these last two weeks are actually taken from my own camp notes. Some of you leaders for the camp leadership team might recognize that. But our um, camp theme this year would have been blessing upon blessing, times of refreshing. And our theme scripture would have been the one you've been seeing from, what is it, Acts 3.19. And it says, um, repent then and turn to the Lord so that your sins may be wiped clean so that times of refreshing may come. That was going to be our camp theme scripture for this summer. We did have to decide this week to cancel our camps. And you can see all the reasons why and what we are doing uh, about that decision on the announcements page. So check that out too. So you're all coming to camp with me this year, even if you've never been. <laughs> Hope you're having fun. Um, let's see. So last week we talked about a scripture in Psalm 63. I'm going to read you the, the passage of that psalm this morning. It says, My soul, my life, my very self thirsts for you, Lord. My flesh longs and sighs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have gazed upon you in the sanctuary, in the quiet of my heart, to see your power and your glory, because your loving kindness is better than life. And do you think that God's loving kindness is better than life? Do you believe that? That it is better than anything in your life? And why? Why do you believe that? You could, if you wanted to, stop the video here and talk about that question. Is God's loving kindness better than your life? Each of us needs to realize that that is the truth. God's loving kindness is indeed the most valuable thing you and I will ever have in this life. Last week we talked about the topic of repentance, and did you know that you can't even really begin to repent until you have put God in His proper position in your heart? What is His proper position? First place. You can't repent really until God takes first place in your heart. Furthermore, you can't even really receive God's refreshing, which is something we all want, you can't get that refreshing without repenting. And finally, we can't begin to repent without finding and talking to God in the quiet of our hearts. Remember that scripture we just read out loud and it says, So I have gazed upon you in the sanctuary. And the sanctuary is in the quiet of our hearts. To see your power and your glory. And so we need to do that in order to get to repent and then to get to be refreshed. And God's just laying it out there, how to repent and how to get to that quiet place today in our message. 
So is there something standing in your way of getting to that quiet place in your heart? What could it be? What stays in your way of getting to the quiet place in your own heart? God wants to meet you there. And in reality, there's nothing that can stop you from getting there. The scripture in Romans 8, 38 through 39. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, or things to come, or powers, or height, or depth, or anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. God wants you to know that you can always find him, no matter what. And when you do connect there with him, he will have just what you need there. Philippians 4.19 says, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Don't let the needs you have stand in the way of getting refreshed by God. You know, sometimes our needs and worries are so oppressive. They get a hold of our minds and hearts, and we cannot see our way around those needs to think that God wants to meet with us and refresh us. And you know what? When uh, that's going on in your life, you simply need to believe that God has those needs on your heart covered. They're covered already. You know, it seems like... When things are pressing in, they don't feel covered sometimes. But the truth is, God has your needs covered. He knows just how to lead you through your needs in the times when you don't know how it's all going to work. He has the way through. So just keep leaning into Him and believe He has it done already. Your needs are covered by Him. And you can just bring all those needs to Him and lay them down at His feet. As we lay our troubles or anything that blocks us from going to the quiet place in our hearts, down at God's feet, God meets us and amazing things happen. Our heart gets a fresh revelation of who God is. Exodus 34 verse 6 is a story of Moses when he asked to see the Lord's glory. It says, The Lord passed before Moses and proclaimed these words. The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. So sweet. It's amazing. When God passed by Moses, his power was so astonishing that Moses had to hide in the cleft of a rock. He also had to cover his eyes and he could not look on the face of God. When God showed himself to Moses, he was speaking refreshing things. Because that's just what God does. It's just who he is. He's always speaking refreshing things. Even words of correction are refreshing. Because they put us on the right way. So we don't ever have to be afraid of what God's going to say. If we know that everything he says is refreshing to our souls. Brings us into his life. It's such a blessing, and just like Moses uh, and God had that conversation, we have the same kinds of revelation ourselves with the Lord. But you know what? That refreshing for Moses only came after he asked God to show himself. And Moses put God in his rightful position. Acts 3.19 once again says, Repent, then, and turn back so that your sins can be blotted out that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus. Repentance allows us to experience the beautiful refreshing that only comes from the Lord. It's not a heavy burden. Repentance isn't meant to be a heavy burden to you. It's meant to be an experience to be cherished. Look. For that thing that God calls you to pray and do and you get blessed by being obedient and going ahead with that prayer of repentance and you cherish meeting God there because his word is holy and it purifies us and helps us 
walk in holiness and lead that life full of his blessing. So repentance is a, a dear, dear blessing from God in our lives that we can cherish and hold tight to and never run away from because blessings follow repentance. So that's exciting for us and we must go forth with that kind of knowledge as God calls us into times of repentance. We um, focus on Jesus in the quiet of our hearts and we can be brought back to life. Another reason why repentance is good is because it brings us back to life. Who doesn't want to be alive in Christ? We want to be fully alive. He speaks a word to our hearts. It kills the fleshly pr perspective we have. It brings the light of heaven into our minds and hearts. And the Word of God is like the paddles that medical professionals use on people's hearts to bring them back to life. God's words to turn and repent are like the paddles that, that are used on the physical body, only repentance is that life bringing shock to the spiritual body where we face, God, I've been totally wrong. I'm so sorry. Come on, there goes the charge in the spirit for our hearts to come back to life in Christ and be on the right path again, living in the life of Christ. And that's always a good thing. We go through many varied struggles throughout our lifetime here on earth, and God wants to refresh us with himself and his presence at each and every turn. He wants to refresh you and me with his own presence at every turn. How many of you have been through some twists and turns lately? We all have. Well, how does God's refreshing come? We, we know, we just said, it comes through repentance. So, can you take that nugget of truth into your heart and life today and decide that repentance is not a bad, a bad thing for you? And realize that it's the only way His refreshing can come. And there's going to be times ahead you will need his refreshing. So keep a hold of this word in your heart. God's refreshing can only come through repentance. And once God is back on the throne of your heart through these kinds of prayers, then you can repent to him for letting things get in the way of seeing him for who he is. You can repent to him for many, many different things. I don't know what God's going to call you to repent for. Do you know that God talked to me last week to guide me to repent for some of the things I wear, the clothes I wear. I haven't repented to God for the clothes I wear since I was about 16 or 17 years old. But God brought that to my heart and it was really his word and I felt better talking to him about that because he wanted to talk to me about it and I let him say what was on his heart for me on that topic. And that's how varied and wide-reaching the things that God talks to you might be, that he talks to you about might be. I don't know what he's going to talk to you about, but there will be things he's noticing. And if he notices it, then it's worth a conversation with him about. Take the time to talk it through with him. 